Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor Hamamoto. It is April 14th, year 2024, PDT. It is 4 o'clock p.m. Welcome one and all, especially to all you lively persons in the chat room. Today we have a special return guest, Ms. Lena Poo. And the title of today's talk is Bodies of Water, Appropriately Enough. And uh, we're going to attempt a PowerPoint presentation as well to help illustrate some of the points here that uh, Lena will be making today. Uh, but before we begin, I wanted to thank everyone who was able to, at uh, late notice, that was able to join us last night, late last night, on the ARC Midnight program hosted by the legendary John B. Wells. The program went down very well. Um, it only runs for 24 hours and then it goes behind into the archive. So I posted the notification on my Patreon and the video is now unavailable. It runs live only once on YouTube and then goes behind the paywall. If you're a subscriber, you're in luck. Uh, if not, then uh, you're going to have to take my word for it. It was, it was an incredible 60 minutes of live radio with 8 million people in the national and even international audience. So with no further ado, let me reintroduce our friend here, Ms. Alina Poo, who is coming to us from a undisclosed location in Northern California, who, um, as you can see by the description in today's uh, presentation, has uh, many years of professional experience with the U.S. Corps of uh, Engineers, Army, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And um, I'm sure she has all kinds of insights upon about these disasters we've been having, uh, including the one at the Port of Baltimore. I think that, that bridge was erected by the U.S. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers. But today she's going to be talking more broadly on the situation as it concerns water. So, Lena, welcome back. Thank you, Daryl. Welcome, everyone. It's glad to be back. It's unfortunate that they took our video off a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about education. That was a very good and vital information that we were sharing with people. And I know from the comments, people were wanting to share that video. And since it was taken off, um, I think we should do a repeat on that topic sometime soon. However, the reason why I wanted to switch gears and talk about water today, the main focus, really the topic is bodies of water. And I will bring in my background working as an environmental restoration project manager for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers back in the 90s to the two, early 2000. So it's, it's actually really great timing to be discussing these things is because of all the seemingly catastrophes we've been witnessing throughout the United States and worldwide, really. And the battleground is coming to our land. And this is why I feel it's imperative that we actually tie in last week's issues with all the eclipse and the hurrah to the mayhem possibilities that the government was really pounding us with. Get your two weeks of storable goods, have two weeks worth of water. And really, if disaster strikes, you really should have more than just two weeks worth. Because if dis if the kind of disaster strikes the United States, that infrastructure is going to take a long time to, to come back. Uh, we're looking at the Baltimore Bridge uh, that collapsed, or well, actually was taken down by this huge barge, literally just not even three weeks ago. And I don't want people to forget this. So this is a lot of things that are to come that I want people to keep in their wheelhouse of awareness because there's a lot of signs that I'm going to be sharing with you that we pick up in movies, in songs, and uh, obviously the media, right? So um, thank you, Daryl. Thank you for having me back. I just want to get the floor back to you if you want to add anything. You're welcome. Um, uh, you're quite a versatile thinker and observer. 
and uh, we've only scratched the surface of uh, your knowledge base, but I, I am grateful that you're going to be bringing in your years of experience as an engineer working for the, probably the largest uh, institution dealing with civil engineering projects, and we take it for granted. Now, another, you alluded to this just now, another aspect of our life that we tend to uh, take for granted is our water supply. Our water sources, the water flow. Uh, I'm not just talking about the two weeks of emergency supplies that we're told that we need. And, you know, of course, I agree with that. But also other uh, sources of free-flowing water that um, are, I'm assuming, are in jeopardy. So do you want to expand on what what the looming problem is? It could be all this yeah, eclipse uh, information and scare is a diversionary tactic from a larger operation that might be in the works. It's hard for people to see the big picture in terms of the national infrastructure. And that's what I hope to bring to your audience today is to be mindful of our whole system uh, operating as a whole. And what, what eluded me to why I needed to focus on water issues, the waterways, our watershed, is that just yesterday we got news that there were 26 barges that broke loose in Ohio River. What? And this, is, this, is in, this is in Pittsburgh. Yes, this is not, this is actually in CNN news. So oh. I, you, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not alt news, right? So, and when I saw, I saw this, I, I immediately went back to another crisis that happened last year, early last year, which was the Palest East Palestine train wreck. And that happened really close. I'm thinking, where did this happen? How far away is Pittsburgh from East Palestine? So I did my little Google search and I pulled up the maps and I, I was surprised that it's only about 37 miles away. Oh um, gosh. Not that I'm saying they're correlated, okay, but it, it's just all these things, all these uh, mayhem, episodic things, events, crises, uh, the, the Baltimore Bridge um, falling in, falling in, and and then and then we hear, uh, not even three weeks later, uh, twenty six barges broke loose and and damaged a marina, and this is in Pittsburgh. Uh, so, I'm just wondering, are if these are signs, we all should be waking up, um, and and they're attacking our water system, and why it went back, why I went back into immediately connecting, now, there has to be something about. East Palestine that I need to revisit. And I'm really, really glad I did. And folks, I, I literally pulled this slide together like two minutes ago, and I just dumped this file to Daryl for him to upload it. We're having issues uploading it. So he's going to screen share this on his, um, I don't know what what system you're, you're going to use it, use, but uh, can can you? I don't know if you can forward through these slides. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah. um, let me let me just yeah. back up a little bit um, yeah. <laughs> before I go into details about the event. I want to focus on is um, for the last five years, I have been actually more than five years. Really, for the last ten years, I've been an uh, anti EMF activist. I've been fighting Wi-Fi in schools, and I've been working with with teachers to principals to school board trustees to try to remove that um, out of the schools. And so I'm I'm really aware of environmental toxins, and I'm also because of my background with um, landscape architecture and working at the Corps of Engineers doing restoration projects, is I'm very aware of chemicals, and I'm very aware of how those things impact the environment. Beyond the chemicals, I'm also very aware of the electromagnetic radiation that also impacts the environment. So that was has been my last 10 years of active uh, solution finding is, is removing, reducing, and, and here I am uh, on one of the 5G Summit 2020. If you guys have never heard of me, it's because I've been shadow banned. I've been removed completely, almost literally wiped out 
from all YouTube presence, um, anything, if you find a handful of things, that's that's barely the iceberg of all, all the work that I've done. I've, I've done more than 50 interviews uh, throughout the last five, six years. Most of them, almost all of them are all gone. So uh, so that's, that's why I'm just thankful to find honest, uh, truthful <laughs> uh, people I can I can share my information with. Um, anyways, so so moving moving forward, when when I started investigating East Palestine again, this issue of the train wreck, if you guys, I, I'm I'm sure the United States people understand what happened, but for those who don't live in the United States, last year we had this this um, horrific. Uh, it, it was it was almost like a nuclear bomb went off the type of smoke, the toxic air that pummeled into the sky, uh, literally killed this massive radius of all living things. Even the moss was dead. Everything was dead. And people were puking blood. People were, were, were spitting up blood. And, it, and, they, and the, the, the terrible thing about it was, was that the government told them, it's okay. Just stay home. Just stay inside. Don't open your windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that was a lie. These people should have been evacuated within at least a 60 mile radius, at least preferably a hundred mile radius because the plume of smoke just, just, it was like a, a bomb went off. Um, they have pictures of it. And, and I, I wish I had, I found it, but it's not in the slides, but anyways, um, now, Daryl, are you able to pull it? Let's the see. Second to the last slide. Um, because it shows a map. Let me see if I can get the slides here. Is it way in the back? Yeah, I'm kind of Scrolling going in reverse. Back. Sorry. Yeah. A... Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, uh, the one, that one. Yes, that's it. Okay. Okay. So this is a map of the United States, and you can see that the waterway is pretty massive. Is the, that the Mississippi the, River? Yes. I don't know if you know this, but the Mississippi River is basically the conduit for all the waterways for all that, all that colored area, which is mm -hmm. the majority of the United States. So all those waterways feed into the Mississippi River and gets dumped out of New Orleans into the Gulf of Mexico. So whatever happens to any arterial part of those waterways ends up in the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. That watershed is huge. The Mississippi River watershed is the main watershed that connects is the uh, connecting point, the spine for all the other ones. Wow. So Ohio River, which is where the East Palestine uh, train wreck happened, where they dumped all kinds of really, really nasty chemicals. We're talking about vinyl chlor chloride, uh, phosgene type gases. Uh, these are all gases to make plastics, hard plastics, soft, uh, all kinds of things I, I i can't remember all all the um the, the the chemicals but they were so toxic that either you burn it or it leaks out it's 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 just it cannot be contained it, um it's so toxic mm -hmm. and uh so so what happened was all the all the toxic um chemicals in those in the in the train that was being held was all leaking into the Ohio River. Ohio River, I know. I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, this, this, I know this is a generalized large map, but Ohio River runs right underneath where you see sh uh, Chicago. Um, let me see where where Columbia is. Oh, I'm sorry, Columbus. Okay. Well, anyways, there's there's a huge river that runs all along the upper states of America between Illinois and Ohio and into P Pennsylvania. And that is the Ohio River. Ohio River actually services 10% of the US population. For all the people who live in that area, 
who needs that water source is consists of about 10% of the United States population. That's huge. That's a lot. Um, and so East Palestine is a town right above the Ohio River and it has, and all that chemical was dumping into a river that was dumping into the Ohio River that will eventually make its way into the Mississippi River. So the devastation at East, East Palestine cannot be underestimated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it takes one faulty so-called accident to devastate 10% of the United States population. Wow, you know, to t attack the mighty Mississippi River is uh, an attack on the American heartland. Absolutely. It's a foundational uh, body of water out of which great civilizations have grown and thrived going back to the prehistoric days through the Native American uh, population to the later colonial uh, population. And now at the end game, the mighty Mississippi, yeah. not only in the cultural imagination, but the political economic life of a large part of the United States, I would argue even the entire country was affected by, by this great quote unquote accident. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the Ohio River, if you look at where Indianapolis and Cincinnati, where those white dots are, the Ohio River runs there. I I see it now. It, it runs all the way up through Pennsylvania. So it is one of the longest running rivers cutting across um, many of the ma major states of the United States. Um, and Is that a better detail? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, this so here's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. so East Palestine, I don't know if you can see it, but it's at the border between Ohio. Um, it's way up on the top. Um, okay, the you see that red line there. dividing it, uh, the, the two states? It's about an inch e below e East e Palestine. Okay, so it's north, it's northwest of Pittsburgh. Mm hmm Okay, so East Palestine, there is a river, you can't see it on this map, but there is a river that runs straight down into, directly into the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. And that's the river that's that you can see running through Pittsburgh. And that's where the barge also got uh, 26 barges broke loose. <laughs> what was the circumstance behind the simultaneous escape of these barges how could it all happen at once it sounds yeah, like sabotage. You, you wonder um it, it doesn't say and who owns these uh the docking areas are these foreign owned entities are they owned by uh, britain or germany or france that, that i didn't that i didn't look into because i just found this out yesterday and okay. i was already busy researching east palestine issue because at least the barges breaking loose didn't cause any damage but it just reminded me of well we need to revisit the pittsburgh i'm sorry um the baltimore bridge issue and keep that keep our awareness um levels high well it could be that a pattern is emerging well that's that's what i'm yeah exactly and and especially since um there was also the Angela Chow's incident where she was, you know, she supposedly was an accidental death when her wonderful EMF connected, RF connected, satellite connected Tesla suddenly backed into a, a pond mm -hmm. and died that way. Aren't these latest cars very sensitive to radar sensing anomalies if you're off the road your car will start beeping so if she now, did broke... elon musk uh, chime in on that accident <laughs> yeah we should ask him about that did he send oh, his condolences to, to the chow family well well you know what i'm sure the satellites have records of it right oh yeah the satellites and would please have records explain who rosalind chow is for the people who don't oh. know oh angela chow okay so angela, angela Ch chow, yeah, yeah angela chow is the youngest daughter and and her her death was recent as well um, and it happened, I think, a week before the the barge 
broke the pier, ran into the pier in Baltimore Bridge, and, and that was another anomalous event. So Angela Chow is married to a globalist. Uh, she is the CEO of, oh my goodness, um, one, one of the... Is that Evergreen? No, 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 no. Evergreen is... Evergreen is owned by the by Taiwanese family. Mm -hmm. She her family owns a U.S. based barge. They a shipping company. Uh, sorry, shipping container. Mm -hmm. It's it's different than that. There are different types of businesses. Mm -hmm. So they actually manufacture these shipping containers uh, mm -hmm. and barges. And I I can't remember. I can't, um, it'll, it'll, it'll come to me. But but her family's super, super rich, very well connected. And in fact, her, her older sister, Elaine Chow was, was a Senator, um, married to another, um, well, her husband was a, the, uh, the elected official Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Yeah. She well, is a cabinet member. She was, uh, the head of the, uh, American Red Cross at one point. And wasn't mm -hmm. she the secretary of transportation? Uh, for oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was. Yeah. And and the families in transportation. Yes, I know. I know. And the family it? also has very strong ties to mm -hmm. the CCP. Very, very much so. And then Angela Chow was the CEO of that her family's company, and so and she was also the CF. She was part of the CFR Council for uh, Council for Foreign Relations with with China. And so she being connected to China and being on their on their board, it's well you don't know her loyalty where her loyalties lie. I, I don't know. I don't want to make any assumptions here. However, but the death is obviously super suspicious because Tesla's are not any type of electrical car that's connected to the grid is not supposed to go off the road. And when it does it, there's hyper sensors that go off bells and whistles that supposed to keep you safe. So them saying that she was drunk and that she backed up her car into a pond that was many yards away from the main road is, is obviously, obviously um, reason to question this. However, well, the uh, Anne Hayshack quote unquote accident comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Did, wasn't she in a runaway car when she yes. drove herself into right. a Right. And I wonder house? what kind of car, right. I wonder and what that kind of reporter car she was also who died on Melrose Boulevard. He was in a Mercedes hmm. with one of these automatic navigation systems. So we know that it can happen. I mean, it's, it's happened before. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why I refuse to buy a battery-run car. <laughs> <laughs> Besides it being an explosion, you know, sitting yeah. on an explosive, right? Just to um, mention how long of an extension cord you'd need to, to, to drive that monster. <laughs> or they're talking about laying batteries under the road so they can stay charged while they're on the road. There's charging ports that you never even have to park your car. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, so back to the East Palestine issue, I started doing a deeper dive yesterday and you're going to really dig this. So I've, I've actually bought the Don DeLillo white noise book. Oh, actually, um, Hey Daryl, yes. can you, can you scroll back to that? Um, Dolly. Dolly, yeah, that one, that one. Hold on. Right. This one. So that's okay. that's Dolly's broken bridge. Oh. That's that's the painting that Dolly what did. The significance that, of Dolly Salvador. So, <laughs> so Dolly was born in Spain, and he he got connected with all these globalist um, people, highly influenced, and he's highly politically motivated. Most of his paintings have some political, economic, social uh, uh, intonations, and it's it's very clear uh, when you look through his paintings that this this mind is his he he's he really is a genius, but it's it's all very twisted, and I hearken his paintings as really the beginnings of a very obvious transhumanist movement. Mm -hmm. that he was already read into the program because when you look 
back to all the people that he was working, um, that he was involved with, and the type of the, the subject matters and how he paints it, uh, what he combines the elements, the 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 surrealism is is obvious. Everyone says, oh yes, he's a surrealist painter, but it's much more than that. He's he's actually really displaying a transhumanist movement. Look that, at those stick figures in the foreground. Um are those human beings they're, supposedly? They're 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 ghost-like wisps of human figures. And if you look okay. at the top of the bridge, I don't think you can see it very well, but it's really, really faint, but it's actually a white figure on a white horse that's about to jump off the bridge. So there's wow. definitely symbolism there on a pale it's horse. One of the Maybe horses of the apocalypse. Right. It's it's the uh, the white the pale white horse. Behold a pale horse. Yeah, right. And that's that um, is one of the signs of the end times. Uh, so let's let's uh, scroll to the next photo. By the way, before we move on, the the Dali was the name of that cargo ship. Right, right, right. The Francis Scott Key Bridge. Exactly. Oh, say can you see? It's the Star Spangled Banana. That's our <laughs> national anthem. How symbolic is that? Right. That's why I brought these pictures up. Was okay. because the. The barge's name was Dolly, and then one of the paintings that one of the famous paintings that Dolly has was was that one, the broken bridge, and yeah, and I have an art background too, so I I'm very familiar with Dolly's work, and so just out of curiosity, I decided to just pull up some of his paintings and looking at him, I was like, whoa, this is not <laughs> just surrealism, this is transhumanism in plain sight, and so <laughs> that's why I just felt like I I want to put it in there. Um, there's all these signs and symbols that we're seeing all over the place. And I just feel like, can we make a definitive connection there? Maybe not, but it's it's worth putting it out there. And and so one of Dolly's uh, series of paintings is that next slide. And and it's, it's- Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, no. I, I I wonder if he's done, if he's involved looking at these pictures, I really wonder if he's involved with some pretty satanic things, mm -hmm. you know, um, because you just wouldn't have that type of imagery or be able to execute that type of imagery unless you're involved with um, some, some deep so-called science, which mm -hmm. metaphysical science type science. Yes. And, and at that time they were also investigating a lot of dream world LSD and uh, traversing space through um, all kinds of pseudo what we what we even consider pseudoscience. They didn't consider that. They con they actually considered it real science. They what's what's really ironic is that when people think of the globalists, they think of them as being materialists. No, they actually were spiritual uh, beings. Mm -hmm. They actually understand the world of the spirit, but they just didn't teach us, the, the lowly people in school. They made us focus on the material. If you can't see it, then it doesn't exist. If you can't see it, then you can't believe it. You have to prove it, prove it, prove it. That's science, right? That's, That's the materialism. Right. That's the type of science the they want us to Philosophical materialism. On. And then uh, you, you look at the painting on the right. It looks like the the figure on the back has some kind of a dagger, or she's or it a, a, a female figure is pulling out uh, a piece of organ. It's it's like a ritual. It's absolutely ritualistic. And then you see the animal burning on the left, which is a shape of a giraffe. It's on fire. It's blood sacrifice. It's it's sacrifice, and so and dismemberment. And dismemberment exactly. I mean, it, this is. The art is also a way of telling us what. While I was reading this series of books by uh, a former Los Angeles police detective named uh, Hodel, H O D E L, and he mm -hmm. claims that his father, uh, who was a medical doctor and he was an abortionist to all the movie stars and celebrities, including directors, and he was um, he was talking about Man Ray M A N. R.E.Y., who was an associate, a close associate of Salvador Dali, 
Mm-hmm. And he was very much involved with these themes of dismemberment, oh, especially wow. of women in the female body mm-hmm. yeah. and pain and suffering inflicted upon humanity. That was part of his aesthetic. And it was integral to the Hollywood community mm-hmm. from, uh, since the 1920s mm-hmm. through the 50s when he was operating. Eventually, Mon Ray left the U.S., I think, right ahead of the law, because Mm -hmm. he was suspected of being involved with the so-called Black Dahlia murder in Los Angeles, of which Detective Hodel was one of the chief investigators Um, later on in his career, after actually after he retired from the LAPD. Mm -hmm. And he went to Spain. And this is very much in keeping with a larger cultural moment that, as you rightly connect uh, to the globalist uh, aesthetic, mm-hmm. the, the trans, the post-human aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, now that you mentioned about dismemberment, I'm looking at the photo on the right, and it looks like the skin has been ripped off of that woman's, the, the, the female figure's forearms down to mm-hmm. the hands. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's just sick. It's it's freaky. We really need to stop worshiping and holding high esteem for all these artists, musical artists, artists, writers of the popular culture, because we are only feeding what they do behind closed doors. Um, okay. Anyways, um, I just thought to share these photos because it was relevant to at least the the the, the dolly well, what you demonstrate is how these core uh, esoteric beliefs permeate our entire society and culture our whole system mm-hmm. we're being perverted by it and uh we are the unwitting subjects of their mass sacrifice these occultists yes and in fact i wanted to connect the east palestine issue to the occult and so Don DeLillo is the author of White Noise, and this incident of the train wreck that is described in this book happens in East Palestine. This book was written in 1985, I believe. Um, Yeah, 1985. And the movie White Noise, and it's, it's really interesting because this book was actually made into a movie the year actually, uh, a few months, the movie came out a few months before the actual train wreck happened. The movie White Noise came out November 25th, 2022. And the train wreck, the real train wreck derailment happened February the 3rd, 2023. So the movie hasn't even been out for now, more than Now much a- of that film was filmed in East Palestine. They actually use I know they actually use some of the residents, <laughs> the citizens of East Palestine in the movie. Mm-hmm. It was deja vu for them. They couldn't believe it. And you're gonna you're gonna really dig this. Um, White noise was directed by Noah Baumbach. His wife is Greta Gerwig. Oh, I dig it. And, and get this, get this. Greta Gerwig was the main female character in the movie White Noise. Yes. And then her cast husband in the movie is Adam Driver. Adam Driver is friends with Noah Baumbach, Mm -hmm. okay, the director. So the three are kind of a trio throughout a lot of these films. And it's interesting because Greta Gerwig comes from Sacramento, California. She's my neighbor. Yeah. Right. And she is, if you guys don't know, she was the one who directed Barbie that uh, almost that was submitted for Oscar last year. And Mm -hmm. so anyway, so Greta Gerwig playing as the main uh, heroine in the White Noise film, I was just like floored. I said, Greta Gerwig, gosh, that name sounds so familiar. Wait, I was like, oh, that's right. Didn't she? Did she direct Barbie? And so I did. I looked it up. And then, and what's really strange is that, um, yeah, I was I was making all these connections because 
there's an image that I, there were signs in that movie in, in the, oh. and I'm going to share, share with you. Okay. If you can. And when on. was that movie uh, released simultaneously? There, there was another movie that was paired with it on that weekend, that opening weekend. Oh, you mean Barbie? Yes. Oh, oh Oppenheimer. Great. <laughs> oh, the bomb, right? Yeah. Well, the yeah. twin bombs. Yikes, yikes. There, there were um, big box office. That's not what I meant, but yeah. Well, I, I, I don't want to derail the subject, but I always okay. figured why Barbie, okay, plastic. Okay. Well, we're finding people in, in people's blood vessels from, you know, the whatever is that it's, it's causing our bodies to create polymers, plastics, and that's what's ca causing the clots. The clots are made of polymers, mm -hmm. plastic. Yeah. Right. So I thought, wow, it's how appropriate Barbie's making its way into the real world. Right. Yeah. So that's another. And Barbie uh, was modeled after a uh, Weimar Republic German sex doll. Mm -hmm. Scaled down and sold from Mattel by this couple in Hawthorne, California, which was also the home of the Beach Boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they came out around the same time, which spawned, I'm sorry we're getting off topic, but I I just can't help myself with all the, uh, this, this storehouse of political trivia that I have at my fingertips. Because <laughs> I know all the haters dislike my ramblings and my well, disconnected you're... improvisations. <laughs> they said, man, you sound like John Coltrane. You know, he starts starts out with a very simple melody, you know. You know, it's just like a pop oh, tune. Like, it's you're like a way player. out there. Pardon you're, me? You're, you're a jazz player. You're, you're just going off player. on your own tune, you know? Yes, I am. But it's, That's but why it's why all enjoyable. Most, Every That's bit of why it. I was the most popular professor in the University of California campus. They said, wow, this is like having Robin Williams lecture. Well, you are cultural forensics after all. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we do want nice every to... tidbit. We want to milk you for every tidbit of information you have. And that's from, just a... from Salvador Dali to Barbie. <laughs> You're an encyclopedia. That's that's what you are, a walking encyclopedia. Um, so so um back to the movie. I think you're really gonna dig this. Um, white noise. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's definitely has has uh, signs in there. I was. Um, can you can you actually click on sure. one of the slides? Okay, it's it's the dark one. Uh, let me click it on here. Sorry, folks. I is that, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so okay. this this I picked up from the movie, and there's there's always signs, always signs. I, I didn't want to show the actual clip because I didn't want you to get a strike for the mo uh, showing movies and videos. So right. I just took a, I took a screenshot of this mm -hmm. and to, to kind of give you a, a background, this screen was taken at the critical juncture where the family realized that they were in danger, that they needed to leave their house Everybody was leaving town and they needed to get out ASAP. And then the, the next last half were people running, leaving their homes and going to off-site places to, to hunker down. Well, this is the, the kids and the family running around grabbing things that they felt they needed. And then this was just a very brief second in the movie. And I don't know why I felt I needed to stop it, but I, I'm glad I did because the monkey was actually banging its symbols. And I felt that was a sign. And actually when the monkey was hitting the symbols, if you think of symbols, well, the symbols can also mean S Y uh, M B O. Oh, oh my goodness. I can't even, I'm like, my mind is, but, but anyways, Say it again. So the 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 physical symbol can also mean the symbolic symbol, the word symbol. Oh, okay. Yeah, the symbol with an S. 
versus single. You know, I don't know what we're looking at here. Is that like a mechanical monkey? It's it's a mechanical monkey. Is one of those mechanical monkeys that hits the symbol. But what's okay. really telling is, is you got to read the the spine of the books. The first one says not of this world, and then the second one is the occult, a history, and then the third spine that you can read is called witches and witchcraft. Wow! I actually purchased not of this world and the occult, a history. And I'm not yeah. suggesting that you all go run out and buy these uh, demonic books. Um, I only do these things for the sake of teaching and education. But this, to me, was basically a message to the world. This this is what this movie is all about, or, or this wow. episodic moment was all about. This was an occult ritual. This, the, this event, whatever was happening, is part of an occult ritual event. And it's dark because how on earth did you catch that? I missed that. Well, everybody would have missed it because it flashed up uh, for just a second. It's a subliminal. Yes. Is this, you know, um, whatever you see in film that you don't know, you don't capture consciously, your, um, your subconscious mind will pick it up. I'm already sensitive, sensitized to images when I watch a movie, I actually don't enjoy it, not the way normal people do anymore, because I'm always looking for the signs and the symbols. I'm always looking for signs. I'm always looking for messages. Um, and to further uh, drive that message home is that right before that monkey was hitting the symbol, the sun was at the top of the stairs right before this image came on. He was saying, the weather's about to change. He was almost like a seer. And he was saying certain things in the movie that sounded very adult for such, coming from such a young, young boy. And, he, and when he was also observing the train wreck, he also said, I didn't think it got derailed. He was looking at it through binoculars and he was telling his father, I, don't, I didn't think it got derailed. It got rammed and someone punched a hole in it. And this was all in the movie. Or it was hit at a train crossing. Broadside. The, 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 okay. The train goes a certain speed and they were saying that a train reaching, going at a certain speed could not collapse in the way that it did. And for it to have a hole be punched, or I mean, sorry, um, for for any of the contents to leak out is almost near impossible. This is a, a train engineer, an engineer that actually designs and fabricates and makes these these um, I don't know what you call them, uh, the the containers. Containers, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and he says that those are so built with such thick metal, designed to hold the most caustic contaminants that they and they over engineer it. Okay. So he says it's impossible for these things to be leaking. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he said, this is, this is ridiculous that they found so many, as many containers leaking the, as they did. Um, so anyways, it, it's just interesting that these movies basically tell us <laughs> a lot of things that we're, we're missing. Um, so I'm, I'm just bringing this up because, I just find this movie is definitely has occult roots because it's showing us mm -hmm. books on occults and yeah. yeah. So by the way, uh, the uh, English professors, the professors of literature are not teaching Don DeLillo correctly. Mm -hmm. They just say, well, he's just an example of postmodern literary technique and style. But I'll go straight to the chase. I believe, and I can't prove it, I think Don DeLillo is read in to these programs. And like J.D. Salinger before him, and others, many others, not just not just these two people, but they're probably the better known of these literary people that come out in New York. Um, 
just like the art people, the art aficionados, the, that's the New York int intelligentsia that puts their stamp on it, right? They come out of the CVS building and the publishing houses. Uh, he's read into it, and his, he's charged with the responsibility, like J.K. Rowling or uh, the woman who wrote The Hunger Games, for putting this type of material out there beforehand is part of their occult ritual, right? Yeah. Which is known, as we know, as <laughs> the uh, revelation of the method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so where does all this lead us? We're being entertained to death, literally, and they're showing us what they want to do to us. However, I've been working these last five years, knowing all of this is happening and where it's coming from, is that I've been working on solutions. And this is why I do recommend to visit your city and, and find out what type of laws, what type of ordinances, what type of contracts. Okay, mainly it's really what type of contracts are your cities dealing with? And in closing, this is this is one of the aspects I wanted to bring to you is solutions. Okay, I actually recently had submitted a letter to, to my city talking about demanding that they cannot include the ESRI, E-S-R-I. And this is really important message for, for you all to be aware of is just because they're announcing all these things that they want to do to you, they can't do it. They can't do anything unless you agree to it. But agree to what? What exactly is it that we are agreeing to? It's actually all contracts. They cannot build a cell tower in your city without a, without a contract. They can't deploy the, you know, the sex hormone change, whatever drugs operations to anyone, whether it's a child or an adult, without contracts. And this is one of the topics that Daryl and I talked about in our last video that was removed was actually I was talking about the contracts uh, that the school had had gone into with a local community clinic. And that community clinic actually turned out to be connected to the state. So that's how the globalists are doing their evil deed is by contracting with us. And if we are not aware of the contracts, then, then it's on us. Your silence is acquiescence. You're acquiescing to all the things that they're putting out there that is real. Okay, okay. so these these are the 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 final I, I would say the the capstone that that can that completes their project of destruction. Mm -hmm. And that's contracts. And you're gonna hear me repeat this term, this word over and over again, because everything boils down to contracts. But how are you going to know what the contracts are if you don't know what your city's doing? If you don't know what your state's doing, um, mm -hmm. let alone the, the nation, be aware of the nation. But really, again, you can make effect and you can make change at the local level. And I've, I've, done, the, I've done that. I've actually stopped the 5G deployment within my town None of the residential areas have small cell antennas. I didn't stop just one cell tower. I stopped a whole slew of them that were on its way in. But however, not only did I stop it then, but I'm stopping it into the future. So contracts and local ordinances, contracts and laws. Laws are there to support the contract. Laws are not necessarily moral, good or bad, but the, the laws are written by the people who want to support the type of contracts that they want to see happen. So that's why all the laws are tailored to commercial interests is because our voice, we're not stepping in to have our voices heard. But see, I stepped in in the nick of time with my city and I told them, no, hey, the city folks don't want the 5G deployment. And not only do we say we don't want it, 
I actually submitted a whole list of my verbiage, which made its way into the city ordinance that actually gave protective measures against the 5G deployment. So that's that's one in, important message to get across really is that we need to start stepping in and get our voices heard. If, at the very, very least, I'm not saying that go and, everyone can go and make change and add, you know, change the ordinance, but at least the very least is to just know what your city is up to. Even them hearing that you're curious to know what's going on actually puts them, it takes them aback and then makes them aware that we're watching them. We're aware and we're wary. That already puts them on edge. And believe me, um, these the city council members were, were avoiding me. The mayor was actually on my side. And I, I had I held meetings with him, with a lawyer, environmental scientist, uh, along with myself, and um, what else? Oh, and a building biologist who actually measures the EMFs, uh, radio frequencies that come off the cell towers. Um, so I had a really a, pow a power group with me when I approached the mayor and we had these um, these meetings with him. So that's where you can get started is to just start having meetings with them. And if things don't work, work out, then you start giving them notices, letters and notices of liability, which is also another thing that I've, I've been working on for the last five years. In fact, I had private group that I was uh, coaching and teaching how to file these notices of liability at the local level, state level, and the federal level. And I did this with the wireless infrastructure as well as the the the, the needling. <laughs> I don't know how else to say, but you guys understand what I'm talking about. So, and in fact, my notice of liability regarding that, I didn't use that specific term. I, I was smart because it's really much more encompassing than something that gets punctured into through your skin. It's actually can be done through tattoos it now they can feed it through put it into food they can they can <laughs> there's a lot of vectors they could put it into insects so that when the insect bites you or stings you it's injecting that whatever product into your system so so the the title of of my um i i actually came up with two two notices of liability um, so I, I called the second one notice of liability for sanctioning biomedical biotechnology and biosynthetic instruments. And this document is over 60 pages long. So just to give you a, and I, I called my group, um, council for restorative justice. And here is my affidavit of truth. Countless people have filed this. In fact, one of my documents, not this one, one of my documents actually landed in, uh, in Alex Jones's website. They Info don't know. Wars? Yeah. <laughs> Info Wars. It was indirect because one of my people filed the document that I had written for the school and he filed it to his school and there was it was a, a, a big production because somehow I don't know what happened but one of the um, it, it, it got into the news in Hawaii it made it into the news in Hawaii and then Alex Jones's it wasn't Alex Jones himself it was one of his men I don't remember his name but one of his men actually went down to Hawaii to, to get the story. So he talked to my, the, the, the guy who filed my, my document and then mm. he got a copy of it and he posted it in his website. So it's in, it's, it's embedded in, I don't know where exactly it's in Alex Jones's website. It didn't show who the author was, but the author was me. Uh, all the documents are actually on my Patreon site. Um, but it's again, it's embedded because I did this back in 2021 when this when this all happened. Mm -hmm. So so 2020, I was working fighting the wireless infrastructure with my group of over 500 international people all over the world. 
And then 2021, I sh we shifted gears because things were happening so fast with the rollout of the you know what. So I wrote a second document, which was the one about sanctioning these biotechnical uh, instruments. Mm -hmm. So that was 2021. Yeah, we, we've served we've served the FCC and we've served the FDA, the WHO, uh, all, all those guys, NIH. Yeah, you know these regulatory agencies, so called. Uh, there was an excellent. I, I knew this beforehand, but there, there was an excellent five minute distillation of uh, reports that most of these characters who had these so called regulatory agencies mm -hmm. or even elective officials have not even taken the oath of office. Well, that's true. How does that enter? Uh, I would recommend the audience to, to look in its totality, the Reese report, report about oath, oaths of office. So how does that intersect with your strategy of the NOL and calling these people out like the FCC? Well, hey, listen, mm -hmm. no one's approved, sanctioned your, and no one really even um, recognizes your legitimacy as an entity, uh, especially since you have not sworn your allegiance to the U.S. Constitution. Well, absolutely. You... That's uh, well. That's the that's the whole power behind the notice of liability. At least that's the intent of of my direction. Is I coach these people. I said you have to put them in dishonor, but you have to prove it. You have to put all the documents like their oath of office or lack thereof, the signed oath of office and put it into your exhibits and prove that they have, they've been negligent, not only negligent, but they've been, uh, the office is not even being run. There is no head to the office. So, so if there's no head to the office, so that agency is, is at fault too. So basically it's, it's, it's a engine running without a head. And so if that's the case, then, you need to take it down to the local level and say, okay, employer so-and-so, or okay, hospital or the schools, and say, we have no functioning agency. The agency's in dishonor. There is no head to that agency. You are following an empty protocol, whatever that protocol is. So you cannot demand and mandate anything because that's a complete lie. We are fo following an empty agency. There is no agency to follow. And besides, I have proof that they've been, they are in dishonor and you show them these documents. And so there's, there's really a, a twofold attack. You're not necess you're not attacking the agency for the sake of trying to get the agency to change. That's not the agent of change because they really don't even exist to tell you the truth. These agencies are private corporations and private entities. Um, I won't go into that in this show, but the, the whole idea is to legally put them into dishonor. All the characters, the players, the actors, they're all actors. They're not real men or, or women. And so what you do is you, you, you bring them into dishonor, then you bring it to your local leaders your employers, your teachers, your school council, uh, school board trustees, and also your your um, uh, principals, right? And and say that you guys cannot enforce anything, whether it's the the thing that pierces your skin or the Wi-Fi in schools. You cannot do that because there are no rules, there are no laws. The FCC has no report; that their report and order is not law. You are not following anything. So what does that mean? It means you are personally liable for whatever harm that comes out of anything that you mandate. So come, it, everything boils down to who you interface with. The immediate man or woman that you're interfacing with, that's who you're actually in true contact, contact and contract with. You're, you're not really in contract with the federal government. You're not in contract with the state. And they know that. They know they really have no control. They have no contact with you. That's why they have to use media. They have to use the movies. They have to use all these, these circuitous announcements on what they want to do to you.
But just because they want to do something to you doesn't mean it has to happen. And that's really the, the main message I want to drive here isn't that I want to drive fear and, oh, this is just because they're saying and announcing and showing us what they want to do to us means that it's going to happen. No, it doesn't. Well, they wanted to deploy 5G my town, but it, they didn't. They, I actually got Wi-Fi removed out of my daughter's school. It, one year I was able to do that. But it was such a surmountable, unsurmountable effort that I realized it's coming from a higher source. So if I were to, let's say, remove the FCC and get the, you know, reach it at a higher level and then bring it down to the lo local source, I have a better chance of doing it in a, in a wider um, effect in protecting mm -hmm. the children, right? Or protecting the community. There's a, it's a much broader effect. And that, that's also how I got rid of the, 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 the taser gun in the hospital. I, I tailored made my letter directed to the director. You mean the temperature guns? Yeah, temperature gun, sorry. Okay. Yeah, which, which is a taser gun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's never been safety tested, by the way. It's, it's the, the taser gun, the temperature gun, was meant for inanimate objects. They just repurposed it and decided to use it on, on flesh without any safety testing. So anyways, um, <laughs> I, wrote the, I wrote the letter to my ho local hospital and, and the next time I went, they didn't even use the temperature gun on anyone. It wasn't just me, but on anyone that stepped into the, into the hospital. And I know for a fact that in this entire world, Nobody has ever achieved that. No one. I was the only one because I knew how the system worked and I knew how, what kind of language to write to make it work. And I can't tell you how many other success stories I've had because you know, I, I've been doing this privately. I don't do this publicly um, for the last, since 2020 and onwards tw till 2023. I've been embedded, really immersed in in law and contracts and how how to s exercise your rights, your your sovereign rights. And I even managed to save the UK from a horrible bill that was looming, where it was going to facilitate transhumanism. They were going to change the laws and embrace transhumanism. I can't tell you how horrible that would have been mm -hmm. if the politicians had their way. In fact, I, I coached a woman how to write her letter. And so she wrote her letter in a way that got the, one of the two men that wanted to push the bill through, he stepped down and the bill never went through. In fact, the, the bill just fell flat on its face. They, they retracted it. So that was mm -hmm. one of the success stories that I am very honored to share. That's, that's all been done, you know, behind the scenes, underground, <laughs> under the radar, so to speak. So, yeah. Well, one of the questions that was in the chat room here is that uh, where, where you can be reached in order to access these documents and uh, forms so that people on a local mm -hmm. level can and replicate your success? Uh, I've been doing things through Patreon. I used to coach people on a monthly basis. At least I would hold meetings twice a month. I no longer do that. I'm actually moving towards one big one. I'm not going to say what it is, but that's my, my focus has shifted because uh, the, the crisis I, I see a new crisis looming. So my, my attention is, is really focused on that one. If you do want to access my documents, you can go to my Patreon site. It's under Lena Pu, L-E-N-A-P-U. And I have my, it's, it's called the Notice of Liability for Non-Consent and Injury by IOT and IOB. IOT meaning I, Internet of Things and Internet of Bodies. Okay, if, if you're interested in using that one, uh, it's tailor-made 
that you can send it all the way up to the FCC level and the UT, uh, sorry, the ITU, International Telecommunications Union. Uh, that's part of, that's an arm of the United Nations. And um, if you are interested in the second notice of liability that I have, that's for the biomedical, biotechnology, and biosynthetic instruments, uh, that's also there. So if you are interested in finding those documents, I can lead you to them. However, I, again, I don't give coaching lessons on how to file them, but hopefully by now, uh, most people can understand and get the gist of it. Because when I started this, when I, uh, this was back in April, April, 2020, no one have, has, no one has ever heard of a notice of liability ever before, let alone knowing how to write documents of this nature. By now, people have heard kind of, you, you know, certain terms. There's a lot of other terms that's similar to notice liability, um, but but I was really the first out the door. So I, I really had to do a lot of education, uh, educating. Yeah. Well, Lena, you've been a pioneer, and I know <laughs> that your research, your, your inquiries, and your contributions continue. So I'd like to ask you back in the very near future so we can continue this discussion because uh, you have something that, that most guests don't cannot offer, and that's solutions. Mm. Even people who are ostensibly on our side, it's just a lot of hand-wringing, mm -hmm. a lot of moralizing, and a lot of pity partying. But yeah. that phase is over. We need active intervention and solutions. And I'm so glad that that uh, you're, you're engaged in, in this process. And on, on behalf of the audience who are interested in liberty and the preservation of the American Republic, I'd like to thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Daryl. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation. I had some excellent, I was reading some of the comments. I was listening to Lena, but I was looking at some of the informed comments and I'm really gratified uh, of the high quality of people who, who uh, come to this site here, right? The ones who want to listen to potheads pontificate about topics they don't know anything about, or those who are like former bounty hunters who talk a mile a minute, or any sort of retread, retooled comedian. I don't have any use for you. And I'm telling that to the trolls who like to come on my site and says, oh, you have to listen to X, Y, and Z. I don't have to listen to any of these bums because I have an array of informed, intelligent, committed individuals like Lena Poo from which to draw concrete information on the solutions that we need. So with that, again, I thank you, Lena Poo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. And God willing, we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.